Oh, 
tonight? Absolutely. Can I help us out a little bit, please?
Arizona Church, our Northeast leaders, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, Paul Linda Campo, and Chip and Lori Kinnear. Let's also pray for the Suspanskis and the Kings in Jacksonville, and let's also lift up Pastor Keith and Kerry Sullivan in East Rochester. That's my pastor, a man that uh, God blesses his life, 
Amen. They're looking for a church building. Let's pray for East Rochester to find a, a good location and a, a great building where they can keep preaching and keep winning souls to Jesus. Let's also pray for the Greece Church uh, for converts to lock in here. Visitors weekly, amen, uh, impact in neighborhoods uh, uh, to become self-supporting financially and uh, jobs to the unemployed, amen. I got a couple prayer requests here from uh, some of our people. Uh, Diane and Sam, amen, we're going to lift them up. There's an illness there. Bausch and Lam, we're praying for that uh, work of God, amen. There's a, a little baby here, Lewis's baby, um, Lewis. Angel, is Angel's middle, his middle name? Yeah. Okay, well, when he's feeding, uh, in the middle of his feeding, he stops breathing. So they gotta kinda pet his butt, get him woke up, because he just stops breathing in the middle of that. So we need a miracle there yes, for uh, Louis Angel Jr., amen. Praise God, hallelujah. We're gonna pray for Jennifer and Robbie, amen. Joshua, Gene Benedict here, who's an illness, amen. We're praying for Flora and the twins. Amen. Perhaps there's a need in your life that I did not mention, uh, and you want us to pray with you with an uplifted hand. Amen. Uh, God sees your hand. Amen. He's going to hear your prayer. Amen. He's going to answer. He's going to help you. Amen. He's got your back. He's concerned about your problems, your issues, and everything that you need. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. We'll call on heaven. Amen. I'm going to open us up in prayer tonight. Let's go ahead. God, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do, God. We're trusting you lord god for miracles god we believe you got to bring lives to completion god wholeness and salvation lord god we trust you lord god that you're going to meet all our needs god that you're going to be with us tonight god change our lives god make us either mad or glad or sad uh, touch our emotions tonight lord god that we can serve you better that we can be uh uh we can be turned around, God. We can be changed by your presence, God, by your visitation, God. Make us into who you want us to be, Lord God. We thank you, God, for your anointing tonight. God, and we loose the veil. God, help us to see you, God, uh, for who you are, God, and to see us for who we are, God. Uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. God, change us from the inside, God. We don't want to play church anymore, God. We don't want to be merely religious, God, but we pray, God, uh, a move of God, a touch uh, of your power tonight, Lord God. We so thank you for the privilege of gathering in Jesus' name, God, and we're asking you to meet all these prayer requests. Heal the sick, heal this little baby, Louis uh, Angel. God, a miracle to that baby. Even tonight, we call on Jesus' name. We rebuke death. We rebuke uh, uh, that uh, illness and that symptom right now in Jesus' name. And we trust you for great things, great miracles. God, help us on Saturday for the uh, outreach and be with us in all that we do. Touch every family member here in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us. Take a minute to greet one another, make everybody feel welcome. Hallelujah. Hey, we switched places. <laughs> hey, honey. But you don't answer all my questions, but you hear me when I speak. You don't keep my heart from breaking But when it does, you weep with me You're so close that I can feel you When I've lost the words to pray And though my eyes have never seen you I've seen enough to say I know that you are good I know that you are kind I know that you are so much more Than what I leave behind I know that I am loved I know that I am safe Cause even in the fire To live is Christ To die is gain I 
Church, if you have any time during the day, you can uh, notify me. Maybe you can show up for a little while. Uh, I'm going to be there all day for Jesus. We'll probably be there till 6 and then maybe even 7. But we're going to uh, outreach at 11 o'clock, go into the community there, hand out flyers, and simply invite people to his grand opening. I'm going to also uh, put, there's some music that's going on around 5 o'clock. If you want to uh, hear some music, there's going to be a barbecue. If you like hot dogs and mustard and relish. Or ketchup, I don't know, whatever your fancy is. My kids don't like mustard. You like mustard? Relish? Onions? Anybody getting hungry? What do you put on it, right? Green chili. Chili. Oh, chili. Green chilies. There are some interested in eating. Praise God. Well, we'll be there for that. Amen. We'll be back in church on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for our adult Sunday school. Uh, 10 30 is our morning worship. Amen. And then Evening, 6.30, we have our uh, second service, amen, it's not for the overflow crowd that missed the morning service, but it's actual second service, amen, and uh, there'll be some more people there, and uh, we'll be in prayer at 5.30 if you're able to join us, amen, there's also some other events, uh, there is a uh, marriage retreat for the married people in here on September 17th, amen, we're also going to Patterson, New Jersey, May 29th, that's a Saturday. We're going to be uh, doing an impact team there and sending a carload of people who want to make a difference in the earth, amen. We're going to outreach there and help our brother with his new church. Uh, Chris Hart Revival is June 20th, and the Brockport uh, Grand Opening is uh, a week from tomorrow. If you guys want to come and back the work and support Brother Harris there, we would greatly appreciate that, and so would he. Amen. We've been preparing for months and months and months, getting that building ready. It looks pretty good. The carpet's down. The coal base is in. Amen. Everything's painted. Uh, they have the doors in. The uh, and I think the inspection is tomorrow, actually, so we can also pray for that, that that goes smoothly. Amen. If there's no further announcements, amen, I'd like to take up our offering. And this is called the tithe of the Levites, amen. The tithe was 10% of uh, what uh, the uh, people, if they were in their fields and they were getting crops and they were producing a harvest, amen, they would give 10% of that to the uh, temple there in Numbers 18, 25 through 32. We're gonna look at a little interesting feature here. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak thus to the Levites who are the priestly people, and say to them, when you take from the children of Israel the tithes, which I have given you from them as your inheritance, then you shall offer up a heave offering of it to the Lord, a tenth of the tithe. Here's an interesting thing. The people who were in charge of, uh, you know, doing the sacrifices with the priests, the Levites were also required to tithe the 10% of the 10% of what they were given from the nation of Israel. Thus you shall also do, amen, of which you receive from the children of Israel. You shall give the Lord's heave offering from it to Aaron the priest. Even the Levites would pay tithes to God for their increase. My pastor, he gets a salary. He takes 
10% of the salary that the church pays him, and then he ties that back to the church, which is a very interesting concept. So uh, as we pay our tithes, amen, God's going to bless your life, amen. Uh, this is an opportunity, can I ask the usher to come forward, an opportunity to give out of your increase, amen. And the tithe is holy, it's a holy offering, amen. And you give what you can give, amen, the Lord's going to bless you. God loves a cheerful giver, amen, let's give out a pure heart, good motives, and a gratefulness to what Jesus has done for us, amen. Can you pray for us? Lord bless you. Thank you for your gift. Amen. And clap your hands. Church, amen. Let's open our Bibles to 3 John 1. We're going to read one verse this evening. That's uh, verse 12. I'm glad you guys came. You're in for a treat tonight. Yay! <laughs> it's a treat every time we come. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> These are little words of uh, wisdom or little tidbits taken from different cultures about making choices. You're going to like this one. Choose your neighbors before you buy your house. Whoa. That's a Nigerian proverb. The truth. Yes. Choose a wife rather by your ear rather than by your eye. An English proverb. <laughs> if you turn into a dog, be sure to choose a rich family. <laughs> Japanese proverb. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Ooh. Who yeah. said that? That's, that's um, Rush. Thank you. Gotta you leave. You got it. You're close. <laughs> no, yeah. He didn't write it. Neil Peart. Yeah. Oh. He wrote all those lyrics. That's yeah. But it's a great concept. Yeah. Uh, it was the, the Canadian power trio Rush. You get the prize. A piece of melted chocolate, maybe. <laughs> but it was a power trio Rush. It is no accident this evening to have a good testimony. It's like you are who you are, amen, and it's because you have made good choices throughout the years. You all made a great choice. You came to church on Wednesday night, amen. It really takes prayer and many tough decisions to become a good testimony. And I would like to preach this evening on a good Testimony from 3 John chapter 1, verse 12. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. Amen. How do you want to have a 
good testimony. Yeah. But you understand, the testimony is the story of your life. It's all wrapped up in who you really are. We're going to look at the need to become and hold a good testimony. Here's a little bit more from that uh, same chapter. And this is uh, verse 1. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So this certain guy here, Gaius, he's commended for his generosity. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have been born witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well. Because they went forth for his name's sake. Take nothing with, from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. So Gaius was walking in truth. That means that his lifestyle, he was moving forward, amen. He was growing. His experiences with Christ, amen, were showing everybody. It was evident that he was a Christian. He was walking in truth. John has commended his dear friend for so many years. He's like saying, man, you have been with me. You have been a good testimony. You've been building the church. You've been uh, faithful. And I want you to be blessed. He's promoting him to God's hand upon his life. We all need to prosper. We need to receive blessings from heaven. And his prayer was that his soul would be prospering so that his uh, body would also be prospering. Amen. So he's asking God to do two things at the same time because his body is not in health. He wants him to be healed. He wants him to be whole. He wants his body to be healthy just like his spirit is healthy. Amen. You can tell somebody what they've been doing with their lives. You can kind of feel them. You can kind of get a vibe off of them. And that is part of their testimony that they've been serving God. They've been in prayer. They've been, uh, you know, seeking the truth. Amen. That word prospering, amen, that he's talking about there for his friend. He wants him to prosper. It looks like a personal revival. It doesn't look like you're down in the dumps. It doesn't look like you've been beat up and you just, you know, just lost. You know, your dog just got run over and, you know, you just, you just, you know, you don't have any money. You're broke all the time. You know what I'm saying? You don't have any friends, you know, and, uh, you know, you just had to foreclose on your house. And, you know, there's something of, of a great joy in your life that rubs off on people. There's your spirit. Amen that is prospering. It's more than just money. It's something about your spirit. You've been walking in truth. Amen. You have more than enough finances. Your mo the money that's coming in, God is blessing you and giving you more than enough so that you can give to other people. Amen. So you don't feel like, I don't have enough. I can't, I can't give to, I can't help anybody. That's not what I'm talking about. Prospering is having more than enough money or relationships. Amen. Your uh, husband or your wife. Amen. You're in relationship to your kids and your family. And it's more than y'all just getting along. But there's some kind of thing. There's, there's just like this energy, this goodness that you have with each other. You can tell that, uh, amen, you're prospering. There's joy in your house. It's not always a drag. More than just getting along. You're actually famous in love. Amen. You think about the, this couple and you look at them like, man, they really a little couple of lovebirds there. They've got a great relationship. You can tell. Amen. The children are subjected to their parents. There is a prospering family. When people think about you, what comes to their mind? What do they start thinking about? You mentioned somebody's name. Let's just say Jack the Ripper. What comes to your mind? What would his testimony be? How about Edward Scissor's hands? That may be better for your generation. <laughs> right? A killer. Right? So what comes to your mind when you think about somebody else? 
you have a picture, there's a picture like in your mind about them, what, who they are, what they are, represent. Amen. Do they really love Jesus? Or maybe you're not sure if they're a Christian. You can't really tell. There's no really like uh, deciding value there. Amen. Do you see a joy and a gladness on them? I mean, is it evident by the look on their face or on their countenance? I mean, I can smile now because you're all looking at me. I can pretend that, you know, there's real joy in my life. There is real joy in my life, but sometimes we, can't, we, hide, we don't really have it, and so we fake it. I'm talking about the words that come out of your mouth. Yeah. When you're prospering, they're wholesome. You're able to build other people up. If Jesus is truly living inside of your heart, then you have the truth that's alive in your thinking. When you're going into certain situations, you're, Jesus is there right with you. And you have, a, he's part of your identity, who you are as a Christian. Amen. Walking, that whole idea of walking in faith alludes to a mode or a traveling through life's journey. Has anybody ever read uh, Pilgrim's Progress? Mm-hmm. Right? And, and uh, so, uh, you know, that's the whole story about uh, a Christian who is, uh, that's his name, and he's traveling through life. He's got the, the burden on his back. He's got sin. He's trying to get rid of it. He's going to the Emerald City. He's traveling towards the light. Amen. He's he's on a path. You and I are sojourners. We're this, this body that you have it is just temporary. You are one day going to be reunited with God. Amen. And uh, amen. That is where we are. And we're traveling. We're going from one situation to the next. Amen. We're just temporarily here, man. This is not our home. Praise God. Can you say amen? Mm-hmm. We're not here for much longer. What do we have? 70, 100 years? I don't know. Who wants to live when you're, you're dried up like a prune? You know what I'm saying? You're over 100 years old. I mean, get me home. Take me home. I want to go home. I want to be with Jesus. Yeah. Right? And so this is just a temporary thing that we're doing. So we're walking through life, amen, because you're moving from one trial to the next, one challenge to another. And uh, you're not going to let hearsay or lies or trends take you off the track, take you out of the path, Amen. And so prospering means you are moving forward, amen. You're decisively uh, w- w- walking that straight line, amen. You're not you know, zigzagging and messing around over here, experimenting with some things over here, but you are determined to get home to be with Jesus. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Praise God. Edwin Booth once wrote to Adam Badua, who was Ulysses S. Grant's secretary and biographer, be brave and struggle, but do not set your heart on anything in this world. If good comes to you, take it, enjoy it, but be ready always to relinquish it without a groan. This is sound advice this writer shares with us. It is wise for us to recognize clearly the transience of human life and that our relationship in time are but for a little. Our stay here is brief and our hold on life is fragile. I mean, some say that life is like a vapor. It's like a puff of smoke. And you see it in the air and then pretty much it's just gone. It's very temporary. So we need to to realize tonight, amen, that life is not a joke or a toy, something to play around with. It's very fragile. Your life really does matter. And so, having said that, you will become who you are, who you're striving to be, amen, what you're putting your energy in. Edward Young in Night Thoughts said, the spider's most attenuated thread is cord, is cable to man's tender tie on earthly bliss. It breathes at every, uh, excuse me, it breads at every breeze. Man, so how do we be- become a good example? I mean, it's no accident that people are successful. You know, they work a job, uh, they, they you know, punch a clock, they go in, and then they get their paycheck at the end of the week. We all make choices 
A man lives by the decisions that he makes. Amen. Somebody also said that character is what you do when no one is looking. It's only God, God is watching. You know, you know, no, you're away from everybody else, and who you are is represented there when no one is looking. So the wise man said, you sow a thought, amen? You're thinking about something, and you reap an action. There's something that happens because of that thought. You take that action, and you sow it. That means you keep doing it, and it becomes a habit. You take the habit, and you sow that. It becomes your character. This can work for evil. It can work for good. Either side of the fence. You take your character, and you sow that into eternity. Amen. And that will reap your uh, eternal place of residence. Either you are going to become... Uh, an on fire Christian, or you are going to just remain the same person. Uh, either you're going to wind up in hell, that'll be the a fruit of ignoring and rejecting God's counsel and his advice, or you are going to wind up in heaven eventually. So there's a progression there. Uh, to become a good example, it's no accident. If you have to have a good testimony, it's not a, a gamble or a crap shoot, or maybe I'll try this. But it's something that you've decided to do, amen. Choices and time, living it out. I mean, time is not just a one-time event, uh, but it's a continual process. It's very easy to do something good when everybody's watching you, amen, when you're on the camera. But, amen, what about if you're off the camera, amen? You can... Uh, fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Your true character is revealed over a period of time. What you're really about. A consistent demonstration of who you really are will be observed. Amen. Time reveals many things this evening. Amen. How meaningful are your promises? Everybody in here, you said, I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to live for God. And, uh, um, you know, there's going to be things that come against that decision that you made. Amen. There's going to be trials that you're going to have to go through, amen, to, uh, you know, eventually enter into your uh, destiny. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to make choices. And so many things are revealed through time. Time reveals many things. How devoted are your affections? I love Jesus, you might say. But where are you placing your affections? Are you willing to change your plans for God's plans? God might be speaking to you tonight or this week, let's just say, about something in particular. And uh, are you going to agree with him? Are you going to just flow with him and say, okay, God, you know, you're right. You know, you bought me. I've been bought with a price. I'm not my own anymore. I'm going to do that thing. Or are you going to dig your heels in? Be stubborn and say, no, that ain't happening. Amen. Are you going to, to latch on to God's will for your life? Like a pit bull. Amen. When they get on, get a hold of your, uh, uh, when they get a hold of your bone, I mean, it's so tight. They're not letting go. Uh, Anthony has a story. You've got to meet this guy. He's got a great uh, testimony about a, uh, a pit bull that attacked his sister. And uh, he had to fight that thing to get that. He had to actually, you know, pull out a, a knife from the kitchen. And he was fighting that thing because it latched on to his sister's bones. Man, we need to be tenacious like that too. To grab on to God's will for our lives. To never let go. Are you able to hold on a little bit longer during a trial? Think about that. We're all going to go through a trial. Some of you are going through a trial right now. And God is like saying, you know, it's going to be a little bit longer. You're just going to have to hold on a little bit longer. Will you remember what God promised you and hold on to that promise even through the trial? You're getting weary. It's not working out. It, you know, it's going a little bit longer. God, you really need to help me. And are you going to hold on to that promise that he made for you long ago? Time, amen, reveals many things. So let's go back to our scripture here and look at um, 
uh, Diotrephes. And we looked at Gaius for a second, his testimony, Paul's wish to have a, uh, you know, a good relationship with God and for him to prosper and be in health. Um, amen. We're going to finally look at Demetrius, who did have a, a, a good testimony. But first, we're going to look at somebody else here, a fellow by the name of Diotrephes. In verse 9, I wrote to the church, Paul says, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words, talking junk about us. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to. And then he puts them out of the church. So we, we understand that this man, Diotrephes, has been written in the Bible, amen, throughout all time and eternity. He'll be remembered as a malicious, malignant, uh, divisive man. Amen. Who actually put people out of the church. Amen. He was divisive. This particular man caused others, amen, to fall. He was destroying relationships. His life example is one of destroying. He's dismantling. He's denigrating. He's putting people down. He's saying, no, you, you don't belong here. What a horrible testimony that is. He's uh, something that I wrote down here. He's exclusionary. Amen. He's saying, I'm better than you. And, uh, you know, you don't belong here. He's, he's, he's trying to run his church. He's a bad pastor, obviously. And so uh, there's only a, a few reasons you would put anybody out of a church. If somebody was coming to the church and they were divisive and they were causing all kinds of uh, division or there's false doctrine or heresy or people are, you know, or there's immorality maybe, they're living immoral, you would put them out of the church. That would be the only reason Scripture gives for putting somebody out of the church. Amen. And divisiveness is another thing. He probably would, he probably should have put his own self out of the church. Amen. Because he was being divisive. Amen. He was discouraging others. Secondly, when you choose to create an exemplary example, you will raise the bar. Your example has brought others to despair because your testimony is not helping anybody else. They're looking at you and they're being discouraged by your life, by your decisions, by the words that you're speaking. Amen. So scripture says here that he was praying and then he was talking foolishly or at tedious at length about something. Amen. This is a sermon that I wrote last month, amen, just inspired to let us look at what is good and what is bad about living for God. This, this guy, you know, he had a lot of pride. He was, uh, he loved to have the preeminence. That means he wanted to be more important than other people. You probably know people you're thinking about now that uh, they just always want to be in charge and control. No, we're going over here. They always want to be uh, telling people what to do. And then, you know, the devil uh, promotes himself also. He said in uh, the old, I think it's Isaiah, he said, I will be like the most high God. He wanted people to uh, love him and worship him. You see, he's still working that now in uh, in our lives in, in, uh, in America, in the world. He's still affecting people. I will be like the most high God people. I want people to bow down to me and obey me. Sometimes you may actually say it, but it is implied. You know, you have pride. Pride is going to be very divisive and it, it breaks fellowship, which is very sad. Amen. The problem with the words that he was speaking, it destroyed that church. It's separated friends. Sometimes words that you speak, you know, you, the best of friends are separated because of words that were spoken. Think beyond all of that, amen, and think about the destiny that God has for your life, amen. And he missed it, amen. He would rather be preeminent 
be prominent, be the, 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 the grand poobah, and, uh, and, and just totally wash his destiny away. He lost everything. Paul's like, stay away from that guy. Paul, you know, he went on to uh, power on, and there are hundreds of thousands of churches uh, that are all over the world. Amen. But this guy's church is just cut off from fellowship. Amen. He was speaking down to Christians. The words that you speak, amen, can really hurt other people. Um, Ephesians 4, verses 20 through 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but only words that are good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Amen. Romans 14. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he can eat all things, but he who is weak only eats vegetables. Let him not eat, this, uh, let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. So there's a, a problem with some people in the church who are saying, oh, you can't eat, you can't eat, let's just say, you can't have bacon. Okay? No more bacon. Would that bother you guys? Oh, yes. That'd be a problem, right? You can't tell me what to eat. Man, I love pork. <laughs> so there was a problem. They're saying you can't eat this meat or sacrifice to demon, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, it, just leave those things aside. They're not really important. Amen. Right. They're not going to send somebody to hell. There's certain things. So we, we're called to really, because God has received people, we're called to receive people also, amen. Can I close now? Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> no, yeah, hurry up. Keep on going. No, yeah, keep on going. So I'm saying all this, not to make anybody feel bad, but to just think about how wonderful it is to have a good testimony. And we're going to talk about that in closing. Verse 11, he says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God. But he who does evil is not of God. He has never seen God. So for you and I, amen, I want you to remember that your life affects other people, for good or for bad. I mean, you're going to affect people, whether you like it or not. Some people say, no, look to Jesus. But really, amen, that's not always true. We are supposed to be Christian. We're supposed to have a certain testimony, we're supposed to act a certain way, speak certain words, we're supposed to, you know, have a good testimony. And so you say, well, no, nah, I'm not responsible. Well, yes, you are. If you have decided to live for Jesus, amen, you have uh, put the, clo uh, the clothes of righteousness on, amen, you're supposed to be, amen, pursuing God. Your testimony really matters, amen, because whether for good or for bad, you are going to affect people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your choice becomes evident which way you are going with your life. Amen. Are you going to be a good testimony? Are you going to be faithful to church? This is a, a simple one we can talk about for a minute here. Sometimes, believe it or not, people come to church just to see you. I can't wait to hear Suki. Tell us some joke or something. She can make me laugh. <laughs> and to see you guys, you know, so some people come to church just for, just because, I mean, they might not even be saved, but they love the people, man. Right. And they love you because you are a certain person and you just, they, people love you. I mean, they come to church because of you. They might not even like our worship service, our songs. Boy, those songs are crazy. I can't even follow along. It works. Where are we anyway? <laughs> oh, so discombobulated. They might even hate my preaching. But they love you. And they come for you. Amen. Because you're faithful. It's not really a mystery. Amen. You may not even be an amazing person, but your faithfulness to church, amen, it speaks volumes about your love for God. 
and what you're doing with your life. Secondly, uh, your speech is anointed, amen. The words you choose to speak to people, it's like, uh, amen, they're golden. The words that uh, you listen to, amen, from people, and they are edifying. They're building you up. The words that you have chosen to speak to people are like gold. Proverbs 25, 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold is a wise rebuker to an obedient ear. So sometimes those words that people speak to you, they're just like, because of their testimony, you're ready to receive it. You're like, wow, you know what? You're right. That's true. And I need to do that. They can be like a blessing, something beautiful to listen to. Or they can have more of a, uh, maybe driving a nail or sharp, you know, iron sharpens iron. Maybe the words that they're speaking to you. There's just something about the, the speech of that person who's got a good testimony. Because it's anointed. It's from heaven. It's like God is speaking through them into your life. And then there's words that are spoken at the right time. This is for those, like if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, this is a gift that he gives you, a discernment, how to talk to people. I mean, some people are, maybe they're just new converts. You wouldn't talk to them the same way you would talk to somebody who's been, you know, Christian for, for 25 years. Or somebody who's not saved even. You would talk to them with certain words, amen, to maybe lead that sinner to Christ. But for a brother, you might have words to speak to him in a different way. There's words that the Holy Spirit will, will put inside of your mouth, amen, to uh, talk to people and to help them, amen. Words, secondly, that have the right spirit behind them, amen. Like we saw the bad example here. He's denigrating. He's putting people down. He's castigating them. He's just, you know, rebuking them. He's just ugly, you know. Those words are, are, you know, not part of a good testimony. Words that are spoken, amen, to people with the right spirit. And then fourthly, right words that bring life to the hearer. And then it's so easy to get confused by people in the world, your coworkers, your family. They condemn you. They can put you down. You know, you listen on the radio. You know, you hear words that are spoken by the news outlets. And it just... It can really get on you, but think about right words that you speak to people with the right spirit at the right time. That can save their bacon. Amen. The right kind of testimony is the one that you have decided to have. Amen. A winsome testimony is a kind of a life that's not edgy. Somebody that uh, is not sharp and cutting, not awkward and ambiguous when you talk to them you know what they're referring to you feel good about what they're saying because they have a winsome testimony it's a kind of a, a an effect of, that is contagious and it's influential in a positive way amen the goal with your words and your testimony is to win people amen it's to edify them and to build up the other person Amen. And it also uh, is helpful if you know how to listen to people and listen and be a good listener. And develop your listening skills. Amen. And listen to people and find out what they're really saying. Amen. Sometimes they're saying things, but it's not really what they mean. You have to kind of interpret what they're saying. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will help you do that. Try to develop a winning personality. Plan on being positive. It's so easy to be a Debbie Downer. Have you guys ever heard that before? Debbie Downer? Yeah, she, it, it, and unfortunately it's a, it's a woman's name, but uh, a, a Debbie Downer is the kind of person, could be a man. Whenever they open their mouth, they're just like talking about, you know what, it's cold out today, you know? <laughs> or, you know, uh, something's wrong with the, the dog peed on the carpet, and they got stories that are all just like, can you tell me anything happy, anything good happened in your life, <laughs> right? The Debbie Downer, now you choose to become a poly positive. <laughs> That's your new life. <laughs> Amen. A good testimony. Demetrius, 
Finally closing here, he has a good testimony, verse 12 of all. And from the truth itself, ooh, that sounds even better. And we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. What other people see and experience with us is the reality of having a good testimony. Amen. Yes, you're going to have, there's going to be some people, believe it or not, that don't like you. There's going to be some people that are like, no matter what, everything good that you've done, they'll always look at you with a jaw just ah, down their nose. So there's some people that you'll never win. Just break that down right now. Forget about it. Amen. I'm not talking about those people. I'm just talking about everyone in general. Amen. Some people will never be happy with you. However, Demetrius has somehow won the hearts of everyone. He has a good testimony. His life example, it says, from all. Everybody would agree. Yeah, yeah, that dude is cool, man. He has a good testimony. Amen. Everyone agreed, you know, that he was cool with Jesus and that he was a bona fide Christian. And God wants this to be your uh your testimony, too, that, you know, you love Jesus. Bonafide means you're authentic. Bonafide is somewhat archaic term that means to make something good, especially something that was bad before. So what does that say for you and I? It says that you and I have hope, amen. Although your testimony may not be very good, you have an opportunity here to prove uh, what God is doing in your life, making choices, amen, and change the way other people look at you, amen. What other people say about you is really important. This is real hope for you and I. We might uh, come to salvation all screwed up, drugs, alcohol, um, you know, immorality, hating other people, can't forgive anybody, uh, but you know what? God says that I'm going to change you. Amen. Jesus promises to change us from the inside out. Amen. It's a process, though. You're going to have to work at it. It might take a little bit of time. Some things don't happen overnight, like miraculously, like you turn the light on and, and everything is energized. But sometimes it's going to take a little bit of time. Amen. It's promised, though. And you can hold on to that promise, amen, to produce a good testimony in your life. Even if you've messed up, you can start working on it. The testimony that you dream to have, you can start working on it right now. A new life, a new testimony. It's going to come through prayer, my friend. It's going to come through you thinking about what you're thinking about and how you're talking, how you're coming off to other people, and through prayer, amen, say, God, I really want to be a good testimony. I want to have a good impact on other people, that I can draw them to Christ, that I can be used by you, amen, to have an anointing upon my life, that I can be a good representative of you, that I can be as an ambassador, amen, of Christ. Amen. And people will look at you and say, you are the real deal, man. And they will be inspired by your life. You might even be thinking of somebody right now who inspires your life. Think for a moment about someone who want, you want to be like. They have a lifestyle that is attractive. There's joy. There's gladness in their life. Amen. It just bubbles up. You know what I'm saying? They're uh, even keel. They're not moody. They're consistent. Amen. Let's look thirdly at what God thinks about your relationship with him. Amen. Because it's uh, a testimony that's, you know, for all people, but also from the truth itself. Amen. That is between you and God. And it's a real thing that God has done a miracle in your life. We've seen some great miracles happen. We've heard some great stories about people who got saved Amen. And your life is not a testimony. Mm -hmm. It's not a testimony. <laughs> it's a testimony. A real sure. good testimony. <laughs> it's not something you fabricated in your mind. Boy, I am really a good person. It's not from your imagination, but in reality, God puts his spirit inside of us and he anoints us for ministry. Ministry is affecting others to seek God. And Demetrius left his mark upon 
the Apostle Paul's life a good remembrance. Demetrius has a good testimony. Amen. What kind of a mark are you going to leave on other people? I want to ask you tonight in the presence of God. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Amen. Mark Hatfield turns his glass upside down at social functions. Senator Mark Hatfield told me, and I've also seen him do it, that it, when he goes to social functions where there's hard liquor and wine served, he turns his glass upside down. I have heard the master of ceremonies at a, of a banquet tease him about it, but there's no doubt that his testimony and influence against the drinking has a profound effect. So this man's testimony is that he will not drink, he opposes it, he wants everyone to know that. That's part of his testimony. For you today, amen, you've been brought here, amen, and you, your testimony is one of failure because you've been living in sin. You've been living by yourself without God's help, amen. You may have been uh, brought up in an atheist home or maybe you are uh, come from a Christian background and now you're backslidden. And you said, I don't really care about what's happening. I don't care about my life. And so you just live recklessly, uh, you know, serving your own flesh, doing your own thing, amen. And God's here tonight. He wants to save you. He wants to save you from your sins, from your demise, from the destruction of your life. And he really loves you, man. He wants a relationship with you. Even before you were born, Christ died for us. And he shed his blood on the cross as a payment for your sin. If you will cry out to him tonight and say, God, I want to change my life, but I don't know how. Prayer is the answer, my friend. If you believe what I'm saying is true, amen, and you confess with your lips, you pray that prayer of repentance, and you confess you're a sinner, God, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. I've messed up my life. I want you to help me. He's going to save you. How many would there be this evening? You want to get saved. You're ready to give your life to Jesus, amen, and get a powerful testimony, amen. It'll be a wonderful, outrageous story about your life, amen, and God's writing your name in heaven. He wants to save you, forgive you of your sins, but you're going to have to get saved. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How many would there be tonight? Or maybe you're listening online, you're not saved, or you're a backslider. You're not obedient to God. You were once on fire. You want to, to get back on fire through Jesus. I'd like to pray with you and give you, give you a chance, give you a fighting chance through Jesus. Amen. If you lifted your hand there, amen. No one's moving around. I'd like to pray with you online if that's you tonight. You know today's the day of salvation for you. Now is the acceptable hour. If you could close your eyes and Repeat this prayer with me and believe it in your heart. God's going to save you right now. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry for all my sins. I need a miracle. I, op I open up my heart to you and I invite you to come and live inside of me. I repent of my sins and uh, I want to think differently. Wash me in your blood cleanse my sins, make me white as snow. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer, amen, I want you to contact us. Let us know how you got saved and who you are. We would like to serve you. Amen. We would like to help you with your testimony. Come to church and see what God's doing here. Amen. I'd like to change the order of the altar call for any Christian here. Amen. You're, uh, you're interested in uh, anointing your life, anointing your testimony, changing uh, everything about you. You want to get into it and uh, you want to pray and make Jesus the uh, priority of your life. Amen. God's going to uh, answer your prayer. Amen. We're going to open up the altar. We're going to uh, give you an opportunity if you want to come forward to pray for anything that God's inspiring you to do with your life. Amen. We're going to sing this song. 
and uh, let's worship God and sing along. And uh, let's open up the altars right now. Saturday, Brother Deaton, can you pray for us? Yeah, Lord, be with us as we go out. We thank you that you are living us and go with us wherever we go. And we ask, Lord, for the grace to be aware of you and what you're seeking so that we can participate in what you're doing and see some good fruit, Lord. See some people get saved. Yes. Amen. Bring them all in, Lord, so we go home. Praise God. Amen. God bless you guys.